This video looks at rivers and wetlands. The most important thing that rivers and wetlands have in common is, of course, water. Water, or H2O, is vital for life on this planet, and life on this planet couldn't exist without it. Rivers and wetlands have water in common, and other things too. But after that, it can get a bit muddy. Some people include rivers as wetlands, while others don't. Wetlands International, a not-for-profit organisation working to protect and restore wetlands around the world, says that wetlands occur where water meets land. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in the US says a wetland is an area of land that is saturated with water. Ramsar, an international convention aiming to conserve wetlands, goes into quite a bit more detail, but it does say that wetlands include waters that are flowing, such as in rivers and streams. Talking about rivers and wetlands in Douglas today, I'm going to use a guide to habitats in Ireland. A guide to habitats in Ireland lists habitat types that can be found in Ireland. It was produced by the Heritage Council and is free to download from their website, the National Biodiversity Data Centre website, and the National Parks and Wildlife Service website. Or you could, in a guide to habitats in Ireland, in the freshwater section, there's a section on water courses, and that includes eroding or upland rivers and depositing or lowland rivers. And both of these are found in the Douglas area. On steeper slopes, they're usually eroding. On the flat, they're usually depositing. And there are some that are a bit of both. Regardless of which type of river or stream, they're all really important from a biodiversity point of view because of the type of habitats they provide for species of plant and animal. The National Biodiversity Data Centre has records for lots of species recorded in and around the Douglas area, including a number of bird species associated with wetland habitats. And most of these are protected species, such as the common kingfisher and curlew. And mammal species associated with rivers and wetlands, such as Dorbenton's bat and the European otter, have both been recorded in the area. These are both protected species under European law. Although Douglas does have rivers and streams, it doesn't have very many records for fish. Brown trout have been recorded here, as has the eel. The eel is in danger of extinction in Ireland. It's critically endangered. I've seen trout spawning sites called reds and young trout in the stream in the Mangala and young trout in the stream through Doman's Wood. As well as mammal, bird and fish species, there are snails, flies and a whole host of other invertebrate species that rely on fresh water in some way. There are far too many to go into in this short video, so I'll talk about one group. We have 24 native dragonflies and damselflies, and of those, there are records for five in and around Douglas. These include the emperor dragonfly, the large red damselfly, and the common darter dragonfly. Of the 230 plant species records found for this biodiversity action plan, about 25 are usually associated with riverbanks and other wet areas. These are species like purple loosestrife, water mints, hemlock water dropwort, fool's watercress, and others. Unfortunately, a number of invasive plant species, like Himalayan balsam, were recorded growing along riverbanks. At Douglas, because it's so close to the harbour, at high tide in the Tremor River, water flows inwards from the harbour, so it's brackish water. That's tidal rivers in A Guide to Habitats in Ireland. While some of our brown trout spend all of their lives in fresh water, others migrate to sea and spend some of their life there. The eel is also anadromous, spending part of its life in fresh water and part at sea. As we've said before, both of these species have been recorded in and around Douglas. 
having both freshwater rivers and streams and a brackish river in the Douglas area can only add to biodiversity here. Rivers are really good at moving nutrients around and they're also a really good way for native plant and animal species to get around. Unfortunately, this means that they're also a really good way for pollutants and non-native invasive alien plant and animal species to get around too. In a recent report, the Environmental Protection Agency said that nearly half of all our rivers are not doing too good biologically. I found that report on the website of catchment.ie. That's a great place to find out ways that you and your community can help your rivers. We've seen that there are freshwater rivers and streams in Douglas and tidal rivers that have a saline or salty influence, but there are a lot more wetland habitats in Ireland. For freshwater habitats, there are 10. For peatlands like bogs and fens, that's another eight. You can add another four for wet woodland habitat types and two for wet grasslands and marshes. So inland in Ireland, we've already got quite a lot of wetland habitats. But then again, I suppose it does rain quite a lot. And of course, at the coasts, we've got different types of salt marsh and dune slacks. And just offshore in the intertidal zone, there's a whole host of other wetland habitats and different wetland habitats can support their own assemblages of species, birds, fish, mammals, invertebrates, or amphibians and others, as well as plants. And if they're properly looked after, these habitats can provide valuable services for human beings too, such as storing carbon, reducing the impact of floods, and preventing erosion. Douglas has some very nice wetland areas when we think of wetlands as being areas of land that are saturated with water at least some of the time. Some of these wetlands are part of Cork Harbour Special Protection Area. This is an internationally important nature conservation site for the protection of birds and is legally protected under the European Union Birds Directive. Part of the Special Protection Area, or SPA, is inside the area covered by this Biodiversity Action Plan and very close to the centre of Douglas. These wetlands include salt marshes and estuarine muds and reed beds. By Belgard Downs near Douglas Court Shopping Centre, there's another reed bed. In the past, this area would have been directly connected to the harbour. But now it's separated from it by the N40. On the Ordnance Survey Ireland website, using the map viewer, you can look at maps showing how an area might have looked like in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Today, at Belgard Downs, as well as the reed bed, there's also an area of wet grassland and wet willow woodland. The willow woodland and the wet grassland are freshwater habitats, but the habitats here are not protected in the same way that habitats in the Cork Harbour SPA are protected. It's estimated that as much as two thirds of wetland habitats have been lost across Europe in the last 100 years. Today in Ireland, even our wetland habitats that are protected by European law are not doing very well at all. As well as providing habitat for native plant and animal species, different wetland habitats can play an important role in storing carbon and reducing flooding. So it's really important that we at least protect those we have left, and better still, that we restore some of those that we've lost. Fortunately, even for wetlands that aren't protected by European law, a lot of local authorities now are trying to protect them and other habitats in their development plans. You can find out more about Ireland's wetlands and how you can help them on the website of the Irish Ramsar Wetlands Committee.